Hello, future physios, and welcome back to yet another episode of the Physio School Podcast, your guide to becoming a physiotherapist. As you guys know from previous episodes here at physioschool.ca, our goal is to give you as much insight into both the physiotherapy profession as well as what it's like to be a physio student within the various programs in Canada. So far, as you've seen from previous episodes, we've touched on most of the programs in the country, but we have yet to tap into a school that you may have heard about called Western University in London, Ontario. Western, it's, it's a school that's always going to be near and dear to my heart as this is a school that I did my undergrad at. However, after my kin degree at Western, I did not continue my studies at Western. So I can't really speak to the Western PT student experience, which is why today I'm bringing on two very recent grads of the program to do that for me and for all of you listening as well. That being said, it's a pleasure to welcome on Omid Ibrahimi and Lily Zhang to the podcast. Lily, let's start with you. How's it going today? Good, good. Um, my name is Lily. Uh, I'm 25. I'm originally from... If you guys know where Burnaby is, next to Vancouver, BC, uh, I did my undergrad at the University of Toronto, U of Tears, if anyone relates. <laughs> Don't do your undergrad there. <laughs> um, I guess a fun fact of myself is I have an extensive collection of baby Yodas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, where, where, did, where did this extensive collection stem from? I'm, I'm curious about that. I think I just expressed how much I like Gregu and then people just started gifting me like Squishmallows, like 3D. My, one of my friends 3D printed one for me. I have like a t-shirt with it, like a bag with it. And then the actual Yoda itself, which I brought to Iceland this summer because they have like a Yoda cave. I have a photo of like me holding Yoda in the Yoda cave. That was pretty cool. Yeah. and I, also I have think a I saw that on your Yoda. story. Yeah, <laughs> I remember seeing that. <laughs> so it's all making sense now. <laughs> Perfect. And Omid, tell us How a little bit about yourself, man. Uh, yes, uh, I graduated my or I did my bachelor's at McMaster originally for Kin. And then uh, my studies for my master's went towards that Western route. And uh, yeah, I grew born in Toronto, I guess more raised in that Mississauga area working downtown in a um, private clinic. And uh, fun fact, I feel my usual go-to when I have nothing to say for this is I have a twin sister. So that is my fun fact. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Is it just you two or do you have uh, is, just a family yeah, extend yeah, path? Just, just us two. Okay. Gotcha. Now, the reason I ask because my sisters are also twins. Like I'm not oh, their wow. twin, but they're twins. And then I have a younger sister as well. So my parents oh, wow. were just like, they, they just wanted a roster at home. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect, guys. Okay, let's let's dump, jump in a little bit into uh, why you guys chose Western PT, right? Sometimes, you know, it may be the only acceptance you get for some people, but other people get multiple offers. So I'm kind of curious, what was it like for you guys? Maybe we can stick with you, Omid, and then we'll, we'll go over to you again, Lily. Yeah, um, for me, it was multiple things. It was... Um... First, I some people that I already knew in the program kind of give asking them what their opinions were on the on the program as they were kind of uh, continuing it and trying to finish it off, um, and they had positive things to say about it. Though, so that's kind of where it sparked my interest and really kind of considered Western and London in and of in and of itself. But then hearing more about that orthopedic side of things and how they have a heavy uh, focus on that is something that I was interested in, um, and. Uh, I just, I based my decision off of those things, but also looking at class size and seeing, I guess, Western is, has a bit of a smaller class size compared to U of T. So maybe you might have a, a better chance to, I guess, ask questions with the profs or be able to connect with them a bit better than other programs maybe. And that was just my bias on it. Um, but overall, it was more so just asking other people and seeing what their opinions were on things and just kind of basing it off of that. And being in Mississauga, it wasn't too far of a commute, or I guess, it wasn't too far away from home. So I just decided uh, London and Western made sense for me. Oh, that's awesome, man. And how, how many people were in your guys' program at the time? Because I know it was like 60 before and then I jumped up to 80. Were you guys in, in an 80 class? I want to say we were in an 80, but then it, we had a few dropouts like midway through. So mm -hmm. around 70-ish once we graduated. Gotcha. 
that makes sense. And also mm-hmm. hold, hold that thought about the orthopedic side. We're, we're, we're definitely going to get into that later in the podcast. I'm glad you brought it up though. Yeah. Um, Lily, what about you? Why'd you go to Western? Um, I guess full disclosure, I really wanted to come back home. Like I really wanted to go to UBC. I almost spend like all my times writing UBC's application. Um, but I guess it being like the only physio school in BC, it had like a low, like a way lower acceptance rate. And they did have a preference for like UBC grads. Um, but I get, I got waitlisted and then I really had to, like, I even flew back to Vancouver for the interview and everything. Um, cause I was doing my undergrad at UFT. Um, and then I had to make a decision between the schools. Um, so I was like, okay, like I either wait on that wait list or like I pick from one of the Ontario schools because I got into all the Ontario schools. Um, I think I just wanted to challenge myself because like growing up in Vancouver and then spending like my undergrad and stuff in Toronto, like really big cities, I wanted to see what it was like going to like a small university town. Is London a town? That was a city, right? But but compared to Toronto, (laughs) Vancouver, and I was like, okay, like I'm going to give it a try. And even from like my physio mentors, um, they're all saying that, you know, like they have this like perception of Western students being really, really good at orthopedics. And it is like hands down, at least that's what my mentors said. And his, he'd been a physio for like 30 plus years. And he's like, you need to go to Western. Like he literally told me you need to go to Western. I was like, okay, I guess we're going to Western. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. Like new city and like really strong in manual therapy Mm -hmm. big big reasons for sure especially when you have some like a figure like that who who definitely uh like advocates for going to that program like that sticks with you you know especially when you're just like a young budding potential physiotherapist in the future you're like i gotta i gotta listen to this guy right here yeah he was literally like you have to go to western like no other (laughs) comments i'm like okay (laughs) guess we're doing that (laughs) i love it that's a strong pull that's a strong pull awesome guys that's great um i also wanted to just dive in because i know you know western requires um a lot of lots of experiences to get into the program right they want to hear about your pt related experiences they want to hear about your non-pt related experiences so you know being two people who were successful in, in going through the process of getting in uh, could you maybe kind of lay out the experiences that you had prior to prior to going to Western? Maybe we can start with you again, Omid, and then we'll we'll pass it off to Lily. Yeah. So um, my experiences they kind of stemmed from my bachelor's degree. So once I was at McMaster, I was looking for opportunities around in terms of what I could get involved with and what I was interested in. And I feel with the I guess the science student going into it, doing my bachelor's, it's the almost the the default is research. I should get into research and I should do something in a research setting because it looks good when you're applying to master's programs. And it was something I did. And again, you start off on that basic level. You're doing the the data entry and you're doing the very basic things involved when you are trying to volunteer in these labs. And I wasn't interested in research. And obviously it was something that was short lived. And then I eventually got into um, becoming a student trainer. So I was a student trainer for the uh, men's rugby and lacrosse teams. And I was more interested in that. So again, the, the sports, the rehab, um, and just the overall, I guess, camaraderie you have with the team. It was, it was that where I kind of just started my, my interest in that rehab, the overall, fi- the idea of physio. And then um, just a couple of that, I was also working at a Cleveland clinic as like a sports medicine assistant, which pretty much it encompasses taking patient histories, being involved in certain aspects of the assessments and brace fitting and whatnot. So it was, it was, uh, my biggest thing was trying to get involved in different things that would strengthen my, I guess, resume, but strengthen me as a overall candidate um, when it came to physiotherapy. So again, having strong skills when it came to history taking, having strong skills when it came to treatment programming. So it's, I guess, having um, a bit of experience in all these different, um, different pieces of physio would, is what I found to be successful for myself. And just kind of outside of the physio related things, I was also involved in Habitat for Humanity. That was something I was just interested in to get involved with and just kind of see what it was about. Um, So being involved at the McMaster aspect of it, where you're just 
involved with school and you're going to these local bills and helping out as much as you can. And then eventually uh, becoming the coordinator of that. And then, for example, planning my own build, uh, we went to South Carolina. We went there and we did a build and it's something you you do these things initially to almost say that you're, you're going to put it on the resume, it looks good. But then when you actually get to these places and you see the impact you're making on these families, it, it um, I don't know, it, it's something that really kind of hits hits home for me. And it's something that it is really rewarding and it's gratifying. And it's beyond the master's degree and trying to apply for these programs. It's something that is, it does, it makes you feel good. That That's awesome, man. That, that's yeah. very comprehensive. There's no, uh, no surprise on my end why uh, Western gave you that. You know, West, exactly, Lily. Yeah, Western gave you that uh, that acceptance letter for sure. That's awesome. Uh, what about you, Lily? Oh my gosh, I'm like, oh, it is surpassing expectations. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I kind of just like made sure I did a little bit of everything. Like I started a club that just focuses on getting like UFT students more active because like UFT students just study. <laughs> um, we don't have a very strong like student culture in like an active lifestyle and I just saw like a gap in that I knew first of all I decided I want to do physio so I was like okay hey, let's do a little bit of everything so I started a club with my friends um she's in medicine now but um it's called activity of healthy active living so like we'll like run start different like whole different activities throughout the school year and then people will just like come work out with us not in like a high pressure the concept behind it is not like Cause like the school gym can be scary and then going to the, like, it's like all varsity athletes and you as like someone who just want to start getting active is like really hard going to the school gym. So we kind of like provided that environment of like, you, you can just come work out without, you know, having any pressure and like everyone in the club is like very normal people. <laughs> um, so like that, I started that club and um, I always, I have like a strong, strong passion for research. So like I was always in the research lab throughout university. And then I was at uh, one, a, like a cardiorespiratory lab um, in the physio department at UFT. Um, so like that gave me a lot of experience in just like in research in general and in like a specialty field that is not really people's like biggest, like you know, orthopedic manual therapy, like not, not about knee away, you know? Um, so like I did a lot of hospital work. I got to work with a lot of like respiratory doctors and like knew how the publishing process went, <clears throat> got a couple publications. Like the prof that I worked with is like my, literally like my mom. And she like guided me through the whole process. She's like a very big physio in Canada um, and a researcher. Um, so uh, that was like the cardio, like I kind of wanted to see like different aspects of physiotherapy. So I was like in a lab and then did a lot of research, um, worked as like a research assistant throughout like my undergrad career. Um, and then, you know, I did the typical work volunteering at a physio clinic and that's where I met like my mentor. Um, and then that gave me the experience of like what clinic life is like. Um, I'm trying to think like other things that was like relevant to physio. I think, I think those are the big ones. I didn't like do too many things. I wanted to focus on some extracurriculars that like and like do it well um so research club and then clinic uh, i was like on i was like into dragon bow so like that was like the sports aspect of things um i was also like, at the er and stuff to just like the acute care part um yeah i think like those are like my main experiences that i used for physio like like three four and not that much not that many no that's yeah. great and I you guys are great examples. Sorry, go on. I just love how she casually says, "I got, I got a couple of publications in undergrad, like it's a normal thing." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even get one in physio school. Man. Yeah, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, like you're you're surpassing expectations here too, Lily. You gotta, you gotta yeah. give yourself a little bit of credit. Start stop being humble. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I just um, finna. <laughs> no, but, but you guys are, are great examples of, you know, what it means to be well-rounded, right? Like we get a lot of messages from people who want to get into PT school, right? Whether it's this year, next year, the year after, right? Anybody who's planning for it. And one of the biggest tips we give is, you know, be well-rounded, like have many interests and 
you know, yeah. don't just be physio, physio, physio all the time and just get your, your physio experiences, right? Those non-PT related experiences really matter as well. And just, you know, developing you into a potential budding clinician in the future. So I, I, I really like that. Um, one thing I wanted to ask just stemming off of that is just because we get these, this question all the time too, is how many hours, you know, and you guys don't have to have the specific like 58.6 hours you guys you know, gave to certain experiences, but, you know, just in general, how many hours do you think you maybe gave to, to each experience? Maybe we can stay with you here, Lily, and then go off to you, Omid. Oh, that's a really hard question. I feel like I had probably. And it could oh, be ballpark. I don't know. It's like a lot of hours for my club, just cause like I was running it like a couple hundred probably. Um, which I know some of my classmates has like had like thousands of hours and things. Like I don't know how they did. That was ridiculous. Um, and I was at my clinic for like two years, so that's like every week. That was like a couple hundred hours. And then my lab was like in the thousands because like sometimes I was there at like five thirty in the morning. Um, and then my the ER was like less than a hundred hours. Like my honest advice is like don't. Like, as long as you meet their, because they have requirements for, like, how many hours you need for each thing. Like, as long as you meet it, it's fine. It's about how you mm -hmm. write about it. Like, the, like I know people who had so many hours and didn't get in. Like, it's not about, like, don't be scared when your friend's like, I have a couple thousand hours in this. Like, it's, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I 100% yeah. agree. What about mm -hmm. you, Omid? Um, for me, it was more of a... I don't know. It was like a seasonal type thing. So if I was doing it, if I was a student trainer, it was you're busy during the fall term when you're working with the rugby or the lacrosse teams. So then during those weeks, it would be 25 to 30 hours a week would be committed to the team because you're mm -hmm. there before and after practice for treatment, but you're also there during practice, uh, just providing coverage for in case someone were to get hurt. And then you have games on weekends, usually on a Saturday or maybe a Sunday. So that would take the whole day usually. Um, and then when it, I guess when it's the off season, I, I look to fill my time with other things I'm interested in. So again, that personal training type stuff or working for Habitat for Humanity, and I would average maybe closer to 20 hours per week. So it really depends on what I was doing exactly. Um, and I don't really think it changed much in terms of, I guess, my, my grades or how it was with school. I feel like regardless if you're working 15 hours a week on your extracurriculars or you're, or you're doing 30, you'll always find time. You'll always manage your time a bit better. And if you have to wake up a bit earlier, you will do that. It just, it's a matter of having your priorities kind of set out and knowing you're going to be busy from say six to 8 PM. So you'll do your work before that. So it's time management wasn't really an issue. It's just more so I'm a bit more busy during certain times and other times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It fluctuates for sure. And yeah. sorry to catch you guys off, off guard with, with that uh, question, but yeah, it's just something we get asked a lot. And, you know, I'm kind mm -hmm. of echoing what, what you were saying, Lily, is just, you know, it's not about hitting a specific number of hours. It's like, how, how are you speaking about it? Right. Like, what, what did you learn? Like, that's what the admissions committees want to hear a little bit more about, not just, you know, you're, you're jumping through a hoop to show that you have this experience. Cause you know, I've, I've seen people with less hours get in, over people who have like, like you said, like thousands of hours and it's just because they knew how to maximize them and, and optimize them on, on their application. But no, that's great. Um, let's talk a little bit about now just the actual Western program. So every program is going to be a little bit different in how it's, it's structured, how it's set up. So can you guys maybe just provide a brief overview going into, you know, how the semesters are organized, when the placements are, how many placements there are, the length of the program, all that good stuff. And, you know, if you guys want to split it up or, you know, just, you know, piggyback off of what each other are saying, you can go for that. And maybe, maybe we can, we'll pass the ball to you here, Lily. Oh, I was like, oh, we should start because like we were calling <laughs> earlier today and this man knew the program better than I did. All right, um, go, go for it. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll, um, I will. Uh, yeah, you want me to start it off or you're good? Really? You go, you go, because I actually okay. don't know how the, I don't but, remember. But how fill it in if I'm missing anything, because I'm just going to give a brief <laughs> summary of what I remember. I probably forgot a lot of stuff. Yeah. But from my, um, from my memory, um, we, yeah, so first year it was, again, that foundational stuff, the academic theory that you learn when it comes to physiotherapy. And then 
second year is when you start to have more of those placements. You have your placements. And um, during our year, it was actually a unique one because when we initially accepted our, um, I guess, when we accepted uh, our, when we accepted, accepted Western as the school we would go to, it was, uh, we were initially, we thought it was going to be five placements and then they did a curricular change midway through and then it was, and it ended up being four placements. So the four placements that we had, the first one starts in June. So once you finish that first year, the, um, and after you're done that spring term, before the summer kind of starts off, you're heading off to your first placement. And that one was, I think it was six weeks long. And then that is when they had like a curricular shift where they're like, okay, you know what? We're not doing five, we're doing four. And then the following ones, the other three were seven to eight weeks long. So in between the first and second year, we had that first placement and then we had a bit of coursework in between. And then we had our second placement, and then a bit of coursework and then our third and fourth placement. So um, we found that, yeah, I don't know. I feel based off of my experience, the shift from five to four was a bit better because you're at a certain place for a long period of time. You're able to see a patient from initial all the way up to discharge versus if you do like a six week period, sometimes you might not see them at discharge or you might not know if the treatment is as effective. Um, so that is the, um, I don't know, that's like the silver lining I found with doing that curricular shift and um, having the seven week blocks versus the six. For sure. That is yeah, what no, I learned I... from the program. What's that, sorry? That is what I remember from the program. Other than okay, that, God, yeah. everything else is a blur. I, I was going to ask to like, did you guys, um, did you, when it came to like MSK, cardio rest, neuro, all that, like, did you guys learn that like in an integrated way or was it like in silos? Like, you know, you first learned like MSK, you first learned like, or you then learned neuro, then you learned cardio rest. Like how was that process for you guys? Um, uh, again, they did like a curriculum change. I think we were kind of like the first class that got all the COVID stuff and then the new curriculum and whatever. I think the the entire Canadian like physiotherapy, like education system was going towards like, like a spiral based, like integrative type of education model. Mm -hmm. Like the, the concept behind it is like, <laughs> we want to teach the kids everything at once. So they, it's more, it's harder for sure. It's like a lot of things throw at you from every different <clears throat> specialty um but it it allows you to be like a comprehensive clinician and like think about everything so we kind of got taught everything at once so yeah. it, it wasn't it wasn't in blocks <clears throat> i i think uft did it in blocks still like our year but we had like they wanted to have like a more like spiral like program um so it was it was hard it was like a lot of theory from like everything um like the same like in the first week, you'll have, I don't know, like example, you have a PEDS lecture, you have a neuro lecture, and then you also have a like manotherapy lecture. And it was like, uh, allows you to like have a holistic view. Uh, that's the good word. The holistic view of treating someone. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was like, also like Western was like all theory for a year, basically. And then kind of just so you're more prepped to go on like you have more independence even on your like first placement and then they mm -hmm. throw in like more advanced like courses in between your placements and then also you get a little bit bit of break from going on placement um and yeah like like Oman said the longer placements are like nice and i think western did a good job in like really making sure that everyone had a placement because i knew i know like some other schools people like literally didn't get placements and they had to like do more school after or something like that but like western made sure like everyone had a placement it might have not been like your first choice but like you had an experience going in um so that was like nice um, yeah gotcha yeah i i can totally empathize with you guys and that you know parts of the program were a blur with with covid just kind of turning it upside down so i i definitely get that um i also was just going to touch on that longer placement uh aspect I, I i definitely agree with you guys in terms of you know it it helps like solidify that learning a little bit more like i find you know kind of like week four to five you're starting to like really get in the groove of it and then six comes and you're like okay i'm out right so like an, another week on top of that would have been would have been great. So I'm glad you guys got that aspect of it. Um, 
I was also going to ask, just because we're on the topic of placement, do you guys maybe want to just dive into where your placements were throughout the program? Like it doesn't have to be in the specific order, but just like from what, what you guys remember, like where, where you guys were on placement, like certain settings and all that. Yeah. So um, I can start off with that one. Uh, yeah. So the, I think the, the toughest or the toughest time for the actual coordinators to find placements for students was the the first placement, because I think we were during one of the peaks of COVID um, and a lot of places they won't, they didn't want to take on students. Um, so we had a lot of students that needed placements and there wasn't that many options available. So what they did was the, um, the, for the first year, they had a virtual setting available at the school where you would see Parkinson patients virtually and you would give them an exercise program. And um, nobody picked that from their top 10 list. And then eventually they just started randomly assigning people to that placement. I got picked for the uh, Parkinson's placement for uh, virtually. And it was, it was better than I expected. I just, my biggest thing was I just wanted to be in a setting where I could feel like I'm making an impact for someone and somewhere where I feel like my skills are being applied. And I just felt like doing it virtually for a Parkinson population would be a bit tough. Um, but we were able to kind of work around that and make it somewhat effective for these people and uh, adapt it to their house situation. So whatever their home living was like, we were making adaptations and we were really trying to um, really trying to make the program and the workout very um, beneficial for them. That was my first one. And then afterwards, my other two were in Windsor, both of them private. So I was working at a OHIP clinic for my first one. And my second one was a private clinic outpatient. And um, my last placement was out of catchment. It was actually in Etobicoke. Um, at a, um, it was like a life, life mark branch that was bought out by, oh, it was a PT health clinic that was bought out by life mark essentially, but it was, um, it was also private and that was, yeah, that was the uh, four that I was pretty much assigned to a quick question about that. Cause I know, um, you know, typically we need to fulfill certain hours, like MSK hours, cardio rest yeah. hours, neuro hours. Like how did you fulfill those cardio rest hours? Cause I, I see the neuro, I see the MSK, like, was there like a way around that because it was COVID or. You're asking a lot of questions right now, Anthony, you might get me in trouble. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, the, the first one, because it was, so again, with that curricular change, what they did was one of the things they implemented was originally prior to, I guess, making that change, it was, you had to have a placement in each of those settings. Afterwards, they coupled the rehab and the cardio rest. So it was, if you have a placement in either cardio rest or rehab, it counts as one. And the Parkinson placement, the virtual one counted as a rehab one. So that fulfilled that criteria. And I was like, you know what, my next three, I'm going to do straight private. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Probably did a lot, a lot of deep breathing exercises and everything. A lot of deep breathing, a lot of deep breathing <laughs> for the patient and myself. So yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Perfect. What about you, Lily? I, I think for COVID, Western had like, it used to be really restrict requirements of like, you had to have like, you have to have like geriatrics, pediatrics, like normal population. And then you had to have like a special like neurocardio rest, like you, I don't know, how, I don't really remember how they divided it and then rehab and MSK, you had to like fulfill everything. Um, but because of COVID and because like clinics and hospitals just couldn't take that many students, um, they had to like cut, like lessen the requirements in a way, I guess for like the incoming class, like for the future students applying for physio school, you guys will have like a harder requirement to like meet everything. But we kind of didn't have to like meet all the rigorous requirements, population and setting wise. Mm -hmm. um, right. And then I, I, I believe that there's not going to be any like virtual placements in the future, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but I, I think both Omen and I didn't get like the best compilation of placements and like the most litest places. Um, so we kind of just like worked with what we had. <clears throat> also like the, the, when you rank placement, it's like, it's really like a finessing process. Like you really have to like play the game of like what to rank, like, cause like good placements, a lot of people will rank it and you kind of have to like fit, fit it with the algorithm. And it's just like so much stuff, but the safest way to do it is to like ranks 
play that's at least how I did it was I ranked placement that was like the not the most popular as my first choice so for sure I'll get an okay placement and not like a shit placement um so my first placement was at one of the chain clinics like Lifemark um and then I had uh so my first one was private and I had two supervisors um one was like a really good like F camp physio F camp is basically like the fellowship of like orthopedics um and then I had one who was, she had like a 60% pelvic case load. And then that's when I fell in love with like pelvic health, which is like my specialty that I'm in now. Um, so I got exposed to like a specialty, like pretty early on in the private setting. And then I knew like right then and there, that's like what I wanted to do. So I kind of like focused on like my, um, I kind of knew that I wanted another pelvic placement. Um, and then Omen and I were actually in, Windsor together um, I was in the hospital though um, and then I did like complex care and that was really interesting experience um, there's like multiple different type of hospital settings it kind of I don't know if you're not a big hospital pl- person it doesn't really matter like what you do in the hospital it's kind of just like okay I had a hospital experience and like this is what it's like like I like good hospital places are really good like they're they're really really good and you really get to impact people's life in like a very significant way um like tears are involved you know um like one of our classmates who were in the same hospital that I was um because basically in the hospital you have like a queue and then you have complex care and then you have inpatient and you have outpatient the inpatient part is like the most rewarding so like if you guys are applying for hospital placement like do inpatient um they're like the most intensive like you see the same person for like however many week and you like literally change their life um like get them to walk and like everyone's crying you know um and then when you're in a hospital you kind of get to like shadow everyone in the different settings so like you're this day you're on this floor and it's like kind of fun in my opinion um so that was really good and then also like living with friends like in a different city was like a lot of fun um that was my second placement and then my third placement was a cbi placement um and like another like chain clinic, uh, orthopedic setting. And I, honestly, I think I learned the most in that clinic because I was at a point seeing like three patients at once. Like it was like really intense. I was like forced to learn my skills. And um, yeah, and then I remember my CI giving me the feedback of like, she can't believe that I, I think a lot of my classmates got that feedback also like, how we can manage like an orthopedic caseload like so easily. I don't know why. I guess Western is just so good at teaching us like manual therapy. Like we got it, you know. I think at a point like I was showing my my son was like a little bit older, like how to do infant cells, and I was like, why am I teaching you like showing you how to do it? <laughs> but it was just like, yeah, I was like forced to like learn like really up my orthopedic skills because like I I wasn't really like an orthopedic person but I was like really forced into like run that um like that kind of like hustle life in the clinic hustle life so that was my third placement and then my last placement was really unique because um I knew I wanted to get into pelvic um and then my our clinic um our school's like um placement prof um Dr. Samantha Dorap was like literally created a placement for me that was like in a a private neuro outpatient setting which is like a really rare type of clinic and then so I did like neuro and I did like neuro pelvic I also had two CIs and then that CI was like one of the pioneers like pelvic health physio in like Canada so that was like a life-changing experience um and like obviously you can't do like internal exams which is a part of like pelvic health physio if you don't get like rostered or if you don't do your courses. So I did it during school. So I was able to do internals on my last placement because I wanted to learn. So like if you guys are interested in like a specific specialty, you can go ahead and take courses um, and then you're allowed to perform certain like rostered acts during placement. So like that was a really cool experience. Um, So like those are my kind of like four placements. I'd say my only regret is like I wish I was in – like I had that like hospital out inpatient experience because a lot of my friends really had fun doing that. Um, but I think like overall, I still like learned a lot um, from my placement experiences. And my last one was like really good and really eye-opening. And it was at a clinic where 
it's kind of like everyone really works together and a complex patient population and like everyone is like supportive. Um, it wasn't like go, go, go. Um, and I kind of learned that I wanted to be in a private setting like that. Um, yeah, so it kind of like helped me look for my future like employment in Vancouver and stuff. That's great. Honestly, for, for the hand you were dealt with regards to COVID, those some pretty diverse experiences that, you know, I'm sure definitely helping now and in, in practice as you guys are a couple months in. No, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, before we dive into the next topic here, just because, you know, as both mentioned that you were in Windsor together, another <laughs> thing that a lot of people kind of freak out about is, you know, what if I get this placement that's like still within catchment, but way too far to commute? Because obviously, you know, geographically London to Windsor, that's like about two, two and a half hour drive, right? So you would have had to live there. Was there like a double rent situation? Like how, how did you guys kind of navigate that? Well, I'll just start this one off because mine is pretty quick. Uh, yeah. Luckily, my girlfriend was uh, or still is going to Windsor, our University of Windsor. So my situation was pretty smooth and it was pretty straightforward. Um, but great. Lily, explain your situation because I'm also interested in hearing how you managed. <laughs> what do you mean? You were there with me. <laughs> um, I wasn't going through that process. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I, I had two out of catchment placements. Um, I had one in Kitchener Waterloo and one in Windsor. I guess the Kitchener Waterloo one was like a more easier out of catchment place. Mm -hmm. And Windsor was like, okay, it's like a whole other place in Ontario. Um, yeah, the double rent is not fun, guys. And I think the only downfall of going to um, schools from relatively smaller cities is like your placement, your out of catchment placement might be in like like nowhere i don't know if you need to cut that out but it, like really um and and i and windsor was like one of the better ones out of the out of catchment um so yeah out of uh, at some schools have different like um like uh i don't like subsidies i don't know what you call it like like money for like out of catchment and then you can like western yeah. gave us like all of us a little bit of money obviously was not enough but like that helped a little bit um and just like, I don't think this is going to happen to future students, but like with COVID, we really didn't because like the school was like trying really hard to get enough placements and give it to us. Like we had like two weeks to look for somewhere to live. So like the Windsor place, like Omen been to like the the the, the house that like um, we rented was like, a, it was really like, I wouldn't like live there. But you know, that was the only, <laughs> like we had to live in Airbnbs for both of my out of catchment. So like that was, Oh, quite a bit of money but honestly like I think my Windsor placement was probably like one of my most fun placements like um it's just like like we had a we had a friend who's like from Windsor so like he like showed us around and stuff um and it's just like good living in a new city like I, I don't know um if you mm -hmm. if you guys are really stressed about like going like the out of cashman placement situation like yeah go to like the bigger schools uft or like ubc or something or like even mac but like western like the out of cashman like you either really have to drive a lot every day or you like you got to play like double rent in like um a different city but like i had a lot of fun <laughs> yeah i i had to do it too i i think this is like a limitation i guess of of western and, and queens specifically because the, the catchment areas are pretty big um mm -hmm. but yeah i did the same thing like airbnb just play like a flat rate I think of like 1800 between me and like another one of my classmates and you know it's it is what it is like you, you just kind of gotta do it so you know it's not uh shouldn't be something too much to stress about but i know everyone's got different situations but I'm glad you guys went through that because a lot of people always ask that. So it gives a little bit of insight to, to them. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to a different topic here. GPA, grade point average, huge topic. Okay. I know when you guys were applying, when I was applying, like it, it was definitely something that, that brought on the nerves and, and Western is notorious for having like the highest cutoff GPA, like right up there with U of T every year. So you guys got any tips on, you know, getting that, getting that report card that the parents were proud of back in when you guys were doing undergrad? Uh, tips wise. Yes. So 
Biggest thing for me is, so, so when it comes to a lot of the master's program, especially for physio, it's the last two years, right? It's the last two years that have become very important. And that's when you, the grades genuinely matter. They always matter, but it's the last two that are, there's an emphasis on it. Um, I would say the biggest thing is use those couple years to find what works for you, what your study habits are. When do you work? When do you, when are you the most productive? Is it during the daytime? Is it nighttime? And have a, have a schedule, have a routine where you're getting a bit of studying in, you take a bit of a break, you're getting a bit of studying in, do almost like an interval type thing. So you can stay productive for a certain period of time. And then you're chilling out a bit. I found that to be a bit more productive for me. And I found like that is what kind of shifted the, the grades for myself and really kind of made myself more competitive for these programs. It was more so having that routine, knowing my schedule and when I study best, where I study best, picking up these small habits. And over time, you'll see that when you put in that work and you're studying effectively, so it's not so much about how many hours you put in, but are they productive hours? Are they hours where you're actually focusing? Then you'll start to notice that the grades get better. And then when the grades get better, it's you're more and more competitive for these programs. And then it's less of a stress when you're applying. So that is the general tip I would give is find your study habits. I love it. Even though it, even though it's a very general one and it's not specific, there's no perfect answer, but it's find what works for you. No, it's, it's a hundred percent true. I think you kind of mentioned earlier too, how, you know, at times when you were busier too, like when you were saying when you were a trainer, um, yeah. you're kind of pe- preaching to the choir there for, for me too, because I felt the exact same way. Like when I was actually, you know, I had all these other responsibilities and, and was a bit busier outside of academics too. Like I was more intentional and focused with, with the studying that I was doing. And I remember being a little bit anxious being like, man, like I, I want to have these opportunities, but yeah. I, I'm also in fourth year, like, like these grades matter, but you know, it's, it actually helps out a little bit 100%. more too. So hundred percent. I'm, I'm glad. I found you my, uh, yeah. I found out my grades were even, I don't even know how, but my grades were even better when I was having more of these <laughs> curriculars to do, right? It was, I had to really use that, I guess, that valuable time to study because I couldn't, I guess, I couldn't uh, get distracted on YouTube or any kind of doing something else. I had to really use that time to study and I found it was much more effective and my grades were better. So I don't know what it is, but find something that works for you and just time management. Yeah, that's great. What about you, Lily? What's, what's the secret sauce? I, I think I totally agree with like what Omen said with I find the more that I had on my plate, the better I did things because you really don't have time to like just do whatever. Um, mm-hmm. uh, some people function good on like a very intense lifestyle that keeps them in track. I feel like having finding a routine like um, of like a lifestyle that you can engage in all these extracurriculars and then also have good grades is like very important and you kind of j- get used to it. Um, Um, And trust me, it like works like it. it, And you got to be honest with yourself. Like you really got to be honest with yourself of like what your capacity is. And you like, you know, yourself the best, like, you know, how many hard like I didn't do kin for my undergrad, like I did like physiology. So it was like quite intense at UFT, like you got to be honest with yourself, like, okay, do I actually want to take these course year courses that are like ridiculously hard, then I will never like the class average is like 45%, you know, like, you really have to be honest with yourself of like, what the courses are like, like knowing in advance, like calculate, I remember sitting there and like, when I decided to go for physio, like I was half year through second year or something I like sat there and I calculated my entire GPA like every single course like with all the reviews and everything and I was like okay like these are the courses I'm gonna take and this is because I'm someone who like wants to know the outcome of things um and not really like I guess go with the flow um so like I was really honest with myself of like okay you gotta take a couple bird courses like you like that course might seem interesting but you're not gonna get that marks that will get you into physio and like I yeah like I literally had a formula and I just followed my formula and it might take like a couple weeks to come up with like that plan but it's just like so easy if you have a plan because you just follow it for like the rest of the three or four whatever years that you have left um but be honest with yourself because you want to get into physio, you know, your capacity, you know, how much you can take. And once you get into that routine and have your like, like court, like you can have a couple bird courses. Like, I feel like people like, 
really look down on like bird courses or like whatever, but you do what you need to do to get the GPA. Like life is competitive um, and get into the routine, plan what you want. And you're, if you follow the equation, you're going to get the outcome, you know, and I have a little wiggle room in between like percentage error or whatever, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> Standard deviation there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's no like one way. Right. These are yeah. all like very general, like overarching tips. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think people listening will will take a lot from that for sure. Um, I think another thing about yeah, sorry, go, cut you go off. On, on. Another thing about GPA is that don't think that you're going to be the one person with like a relatively lower GPA and get into physio school, like have a buffer room for yourself. If you need to take that whatever theater class to get a high GPA, <laughs> take that class and like. I know that I'm not like the don't have the most amazing extracurriculars. I knew I needed grades. So like that was something that I banked on. Um, and like, you know, don't be afraid to take those easy courses where like ask people who took the courses for advice, like do it like because in the day, you know, you're going to be a good physio and you want what you want. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the buffer room is, is a huge point because, uh, you know, sometimes we'll put out like numbers, like we want you, like people who are aiming for physio school or like, you know, guys kind of aim between like a 3.83 to a 3.8, like seven, like that range. Right. And some people kind of come back at us and be like, well, you know, the cutoff for this school was way lower than that. And we're like, you know, we understand that for sure. But to give yourself the best chance at multiple schools like why wouldn't you aim as high as possible so that you know you have potentially more options right maybe not just like tunnel vision on one sometimes people fall into that for sure but um i think it's good to have that buffer room and just try and just aim as as high as possible because then you don't really have question marks on if you're going to meet a, a cutoff so i like that um, outside of the realm of GPA, so Western, the, uh, another component of their application, they require two standard letters of reference. So, a uh, academic reference and then a professional reference. So lots of questions around this as well. Um, I kind of wanted to ask you guys, how did you go about getting these letters of reference and maybe dive into who you asked? Like, you don't have to mention any names or anything like that, but you know, maybe it was like your physiology prof maybe something may mention something like that and then we can go from there maybe we'll start with you omid yeah um for my academic uh reference it was my my kin prof so my anatomy prof at mcmaster um yeah she is uh, she, i don't know she she is very close with the students and whatnot and i felt like we had a really great relationship and i don't think it necessarily has to be one of those relationships where you're doing work beyond the classroom. It's even just a simple conversation in class, just asking her questions and whatnot is how you build that report, right? You don't have to really be working at a lab to with this person to have that reference. A lot of profs know it's, it's students are looking for these academic uh, references and it's something that is common for them to come and ask them even if you had only a few interactions with them. So it's not out of the question and it's not weird or awkward if you were to ask them, it's something that they're used to and they're more, gladly willing to uh, write that reference for you. So they would write that reference and they would ask you questions, right? It's every prof is different, but if you build that rapport with them, or if you don't, they might ask you questions. What have you been doing? What are your extracurriculars like? And just to kind of gauge what type of person you are. And then they would cross reference how your grades are in class. And then they would use all that to really make that reference a bit more personalized and then give one that is true to who you are, but something that would help make you a bit more competitive when you're applying. That was my academic reference. And then when it came to my professional one, I, I, um, I took a year off between my, my bachelor's and my master's because I was not sure what I wanted to do. I had no idea if I wanted to do physio. I didn't know if I wanted to go into Cairo or what the case was or if I wanted to go into rehab in general. So I wanted to really just kind of make sure I, w I was doing the right decision and not get into a program that I end up hating and not pursuing because, um, because I rushed into it, because I see all my classmates doing it. And they're applying to these graduate programs. And I feel like I'm missing a year by not applying with them. So I just want a lot of people applying or prospective students just to keep that in mind. Just it's there's no rush. Take the time to know what you want to do and don't rush into a program because you feel the pressure from parents or you feel the pressure from your classmates. It's at the end of the day, this is your career and this is going to be that something that you would hopefully be doing for many years. So make sure it's something that you do like. 
So during that year, I pretty much worked at Cleveland Clinic in downtown Toronto. And uh, my my reference was the sports medicine physician I was working with. He was duly licensed as a physiotherapist and a sports medic. So it worked out better in that way. But um, working with him on a daily basis is what kind of helped him kind of gauge the type of person I was and my skills and whatnot. And he just made a personalized um, reference off of that. I love it. Yeah. And especially with that academic reference, some of the things that you mentioned there about like being inquisitive, asking questions, that small talk no. goes such a long way. Goes you know, a long way. Like, hey, how was, how was the, uh, did you watch the Broncos game on the weekend? 100%. You know, like, they're going to remember yeah. you. They'll and probably next, write that in your, in your reference. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's key, it's man. Building report. Yeah, for sure. What about you, Lily? Um, I just want to say that, like, guys, don't be afraid to ask people for to be your reference. Like, even if you haven't really talked with that prof or whatever, you don't have an academic reference. You know, if the first first person don't give it to you, the second prof is gonna give it to you. Like, they know that these students need a reference, and if you're nice enough and just be honest, like, if you really want to get into physio school and you have all these experience and you're doing well in their class and you're a nice person, they're gonna give you a reference. Um, you know, like, like Omen and I had like have more like personalized like like references that we built over the years but you don't really don't need to have that a lot of our classmates just had you know they just asked their prof that they barely even talked to and then they got a reference and then they got into physio school so it's not that big of a um there's it's not uh, don't be stressed about it just you know just don't be afraid and just ask <laughs> um obviously like have this like speed like know like who you are and you can explain yourself um but regarding my references um I was always in research so, like my academic one was really easy I just asked like my prof um uh, who ran the lab that I worked at um and like obviously she was like quite a big name in physio so that was like a really um strong reference I'd say um and we really had like a strong relationship over the years, um, worked with her for like a long time. So that was like a really easy ask for me. Like she knew I wanted to do physio, like she offered to be my reference like a while back. So that wasn't like too much stress for me. Um, and my professional reference was like the my physio mentor that I had like at the clinic that I was volunteering at. And like, he was really happy to give me a reference also because I've been with him for so long. So like my reference experience was very fairly easy. Um, but I just want to say like, the reference part is really not that big of a deal. Like, I know you're asking someone for something like really, really big, but just ask, they'll give it to you. Like they've done it so many times, right? Like, as long as yeah. you know who you yourself are and your reasoning. Um, and you're not, like not failing their class like <laughs> it's yeah. uh it's a pretty simple like i at my clinic like actually one of the first years right now at western oh i guess he's second year now he like just worked at my clinic for like two months and then my mentor gave him a reference and he got in so it's not like and i worked there for like two years so <laughs> yeah. you know <laughs> yeah it's like uh it's a it's a daunting thing when when you think about it like in theory but you know when you're actually just needing to do it like it, it's something that just don't overcomplicate it yeah so that's that's key um last question about like application components so western also requires personal statement i know you guys probably spent lots of time writing it reading it over getting people to edit it revise all that and then you submitted it so i know that that brings a lot of uh, stress on as well so you know, not giving anything away here, but do you guys have any general tips for the Western personal statement? And we could start with you again, Omid. Yeah, um, honestly, the the best, I guess, anal analogy I could give for this is almost act like you're a car, car salesman, right? You're trying to sell yourself. And I feel like you're not, don't oversell yourself or don't, I, don't in a sense lie on your resume or on that personal statement, but at the same time, don't be humble either, right? Just make sure that you're, you're stating what you've done and you have to, uh, in a sense, they have to kind of gauge what type of person you are off a written piece of paper. So just make sure that you are really going to depth of what you've done, what your roles were and, um, and how applicable it is to the field of physiotherapy. So don't, in a sense, undersell yourself, don't be humble about it, but at the same time, you're obviously not 
you're not lying or you're not over exaggerating certain things. You're just selling yourself as is, right? You're selling yourself and you're trying to present yourself in the best light. And that is what I think everyone should do. And it's personal statement isn't a type of place where you uh, stay humble. You have to at least just be a bit more forward and aggressive when it comes to stating what you've done. And, and again, that applicability aspect of it. For sure. It's like, it's like walking that like fine line between yeah. like underselling, but like not being arrogant. Like you just you need to be like, I, I have these experiences. This is what I've learned. You know, I'd be a great asset to your por- program, but it's, it's a difficult one to, to tread for sure. 100%. What about you, Lily? What, what, what's the, what's the key to the personal statement? I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I, I, my, one of my friends who, uh, who, uh, who went to physics school at UBC, like he talked with me when I was applying about this concept of each school has a black box. Okay. And in this black box is how they filter the personal statements. There's certain things you have to say that make you higher on the party list or whatever. So in my opinion, you can't just like really write about whatever you want to write about. Um, I, I remember watching like one of Anthony's videos, like you have to have like, there's like certain like competencies that you have to mention. You can't just write a whatever essay, like put your passion into it. Like you have to, there's a certain, if you want a higher chance to get in physio school, there's a certain like formula that you need to like follow and stuff that you need to hit. And honestly, that comes with looking at the competency profile, talking with friends, getting different um, friends who got into professional schools to like look at what you wrote because the general black box of each school have is similar. And like once you have those things in the black box, like you're basically going to get in personal s- statement wise. Um, I think like don't be be like, oh my gosh, I don't know enough people who like got into physio or like are in different professional school to read my essay because Omen, one of Omen and I's classmates spent, I don't know, like three days writing his personal statement and he got it. So it's really like, I don't know, like, of course he's an amazing writer, but don't be too um, stressed over it. Uh, but there are certain things that I guess if you're not the best writer yourself, like I am, there are certain things that like you can mention um, that will kind of give you a better opportunity into of a guideline of like what to write about. And I think a big part is the the competency profile and getting, if you can, friends who've gotten into the program to read your personal statement and provide edits because like they all got in. So something in their application is a part of that black box. Um, and that just increases the likelihood of you getting in. I really think if it wasn't for my friends, I definitely would not have gotten to physio school because I just got so many people to read my essay, <laughs> uh, my statement. It was just at the end, it was like, like I can see like the black box, the, what they're talking about. Is that there's a specific way of how you should write. Um, but yet again, there's people who spend three days writing their personal statement and getting it. And so it's, it's about, um, yeah, I would, I would get a couple of people to like read your stuff who are like yeah. in the program. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big, big ske- spectrum there but I, I do like the point about the similarities between other programs and other professions I remember specifically like reading one of my friends uh, optometry school personal statement um, and I remember just like reading it over just to like be a good friend and be like yeah, yeah I'll read it over and then I was like man this is actually really helpful because I hadn't written my personal statement yet for physio school and I, I, I kind of applied some of the principles that he used for that into my statement, which, you know, obviously really helped as well, because, you know, that they, they are looking for specific things like how you came across the profession, why you feel you're right for it, how these experiences have, you know, shown that you're you're committed to getting into this profession and how they've you know helped you learn more about the profession. So, you know, there's there's definitely ways around that. But I do like the point about the competencies as well. That's a big hint for for anyone listening i guess i have another Uh tip about if you Mm -hmm. wanted to get into a specific school um research about the school enough to like talk about something very unique to that school like for example western has a fowler kennedy clinic like somehow whip that in you know like each school has their thing talk about it so they think that you care about the school 
like obviously I cared about Western a lot when I wrote about it, but you know, find that one thing to talk about about that school that is like you got from doing some research about. Um, and I think that 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 like helped a lot too. Yeah, it's it's like Salt Bay, like you're just like yeah. sprinkling it in, right? It's it's not you know, it's not a huge paragraph on something about school, but you know, you're showing like I looked into it, right? Like that something like that can go a long way from in terms of like separating you from from the from the pack. So I like that for sure. I think I think um, also just kind of Yeah, yeah go on, go on. I, I just building off of that point, but yeah, just what you guys pretty much said. It was it's not so much about the idea of writing down what you've done in terms of your experiences. It's elaborating on it. It's saying how has that shaped you into what type of person you are now and how does that apply to becoming a future healthcare professional? So it's not like you're saying, oh yeah, I've done research. You have to elaborate on what have you learned from doing research. You're now more, I guess, organized or you're, you're better with X, Y, and Z. So it's write down what you've done and it's not so much about a list. It's about writing down what you've done, what you've learned from that and how it applies to physiotherapy. So just having yep. that outline is what will kind of get you going. And um, then afterwards, it's more so the editing from, again, people who have applied to these professional programs or friends that can take a second look at it. Yeah, so key. Sometimes pe like people look at it like just checking the boxes in terms yeah. of like I have this experience, right? Tell me, like, what, what did you learn, right? What did you learn? That's great. Uh, coming down to the wire here, last few questions. Um, so I know we kind of touched on this a little bit about, you know, Western being that, like having that reputation for being like the orthopedic musculoskeletal manual therapy school. Okay. Lots of rumors about this you guys touched on it a little bit. So I want to know, like, are the rumors true? Right. And, and what way is like Western this, this, you know, get, getting this reputation, like, you guys have been through it, so you've seen it. So what what makes it that that powerhouse for, for orthopedics? Um, for honestly, I I can't really compare it to other schools just because I have no idea what their curriculum looks like or how much of a focus they do have in that orthopedics. Mm -hmm. But from a Western perspective, it's it comes down to first off the profs, a lot of them being that F camp prof and a lot of their practice is heavy on that manual therapy that's one portion of it but the other portion is i feel like our labs and our our, our time where we're actually doing hands-on skills are mainly around that orthopedics around that msk so i feel like those lab works or those building blocks where you're in person is more catered towards that orthopedics so that is what i feel really kind of sets um maybe sets western apart that's what my assumption is i don't know what the other programs are like but I found that those lab sessions were a lot or were heavily focused on the hands-on, the manual therapy and a lot of the feedback from profs. Gotcha. That makes sense. What about, what about you, Lily? What's your, what's your take on that? I think that um, rumor is absolutely true. Like it's, it's from feedback from uh, like clinical investigators, like the profs that we have, the experiences of like myself compared to my friends who went to other schools. Um, but, you know, like the downside of that is like you don't get exposed to other things as intensely as if you were going to go to another school. And you I don't know, like you might be really into cardio arrest, but then you didn't get your enough of a cardio arrest experience. Like you don't know that that was your passion. Um, but in regards to Western being like the big manual therapy school, like, yeah, we have other other than the University of Manitoba, we have like the most orthopedic. Um, FCAM examiners, um, we, I think we have four <laughs> that are actually like there to teach you, like hand on your hand to teach you. And these are like the biggest name in orthopedics. Like they are like the examiners for like, um, I think there's only like 10 or how many, like, like less than 20 of them in Canada and like four is at Western. Um, so that was like really, um, like just learning from the people who like run the foundation of like Canada's like orthopedic -ness. Um, is that even a word um, is like a really good experience and yeah like if you're into orthopedics if you knew that's what what you want to do like I strongly recommend you go to Western because you are going to get that experience right um, and I think you know you can come out of school challenge your like 
um, F camp level one and was like a very easy experience for Western students as compared to like um, the other students for sure. Yeah. Just to, just to add on to that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think also the fact that Fowler Kennedy is right there and a lot of the clinicians that are at Fowler Kennedy teach at uh, Western as well, like for guest lecturers, maybe those, I think that might also play a factor in why it is so reputable when it comes to the orthopedics. It's Fowler Kennedy's right there. We have a lot of the lecturers that come in and we do have placements that are based out of Fowler. So it definitely helps to it. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I can see that too. And I think, yeah, just like in summary, like it comes down to like the names within the faculty, like you were mentioning the amount of emphasis that's put on it like from lab to lab and lecture to lecture. And then as well as just like the feedback coming from, you know, people that you've met outside of, of the program or people who have like gone to the program before, like you were saying earlier, Lily, about how, you know, that one guy was just like, go to Western, right. Or like even the other physio is saying like, wow, like you're so great at this, this manual stuff already. And you're like, you're a student, you haven't even graduated yet. Right. So I think that kind of solidifies where that comes from. That's great. Um, but I was going to ask, so like you did mention about, you know, cardio rest and neuro in there as well. So what do you say to somebody who is considering Western, but maybe they're like dead set on, you know, being a cardio rest clinician. And it's one of those things where it's like, there's no open mind about this. Like they have a very strong, like vocational drive to it. Like, like, would you, you know, recommend it? Like, are they going to get the same amount of, of education there? Like, I know it's difficult because like you haven't been in other programs as well, but just based on your experience, what, what would you say about that? Um, my stance on that is regardless of whatever program you're going to in Ontario or beyond, it's some schools might be more focused on orthopedics or cardio resp or whatnot. And I, I feel like that is that is definitely a, a pro, but at the same time, you're not going to be the best clinician going out of grad school when you're practicing. Every, even when it comes to when when it comes to Western students, it's yes, our school might be a bit more focused on orthopedics, but our handwork is not going to be what it should be unless we have that experience. So, regardless of whatever the school heavily heavily emphasizes, at the end of the day, you're not going to be the best clinician coming out of school. So it's more so the experience. So I don't think it should dictate necessarily which school you attend, but more so. The uh, I think it's more so to say that the depending on what school you go to, maybe U of T, you might have more hospitals around you. Uh, that might be a perk to uh, to attending U of T versus another school if you're interested in cardio rest. But generally speaking, it's the experience after school that will really, um, I guess, will, will hone in on those skills and really kind of help build you as a clinician, whether you're into orthopedics or cardio rest. But just, um, yeah, just to be transparent with it, you're not going to be the best clinician in in cardio rest, neuro, or whatever the case is, right out of school. Everyone is going to be at that baseline, and it's more so building on it once you're practicing in those settings. I agree. Yeah, I, I like strongly believe that, you know, it your your career is what you make it after school, right? Because you know, if you didn't if you didn't feel like you got enough of one aspect of practice, you can always take continuing education courses in that, right? Yeah. You know, and even like, you know, with, with your example, Lily too, it's like, you know, it's not like Western was, you know, super focused on, you know, pelvic health. Right. But look at you now, right. You, you're, you're in that field, right. And mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of like making, like you're putting your footprint in that area of practice. Right. And, you know, it's not something that's like a huge foundational topic within the program. So, you know, whatever you want to do afterwards, like that's totally on you and you can, you know, the world is your oyster when you're, when you're a physio in Canada. So that's great. Um, One thing yeah, go. Sorry, I can add is that to be a physio school, physical therapy school in Canada, you have to meet certain curriculums. So every school has enough curriculum in each specialty to teach you. And whoever is teaching it is like the top of the field in the, like in Canada, pretty much there's only a couple of people. So like, you're going to get the experience and like, you never know when you get that stimulation from, it can be from your placement. It can be this one person it can be this one patient, right? Like one of our prof was like super gone ho like orthopedist going to Western and she ended up on her last placement, fell in love with like rehab. And now she's our rehab prof. So like she went to Western. So it really, it really doesn't, it, end of the day, it doesn't matter as long as like you're in a school. Yeah. 
Exactly. Mm-hmm. You're going to learn what you got to learn for the, for the national exams. And then <laughs> after that, you can, you, you can do what you want. That's great. Um, before we move on to the last few questions here, do you guys just have any other general tips for applying to Western specifically that you didn't mention? Or do you think you touched on everything? I, I think the, the general tip I would give to anyone applying, maybe specific to Western, but also the other programs is, yeah, what you kind of um, just reiterating what you said, but being well-rounded. It's not so much about having a volume of experiences in physio related curriculars it's being able to talk about other passions that you have and other things that you have been doing that's not related to physio because at the end of the day when they are picking candidates not based off of your experience in physio because they will give you that experience they will give you those experiences through placements and through the curriculum it's more so about what have you done outside of that because when it comes to being a great clinician it's not just the hands-on skills it's not just what you know out of a book it's more so about the soft skills what can you really bring to the field that can build that alliance or that bond with your patients. So just being well-rounded in general and knowing a bit of everything or having a bit more experiences in other avenues is a, goes a long way. I I hope most applicants hear that for sure. Cause I, I I echo that. What about you, Lily? Mm, I think like, don't stress too much about what I need to write specifically about the school each school to get into each school like you know you have a little bit of salt of like their uniqueness for for them but you are who you are you work so hard to apply like you are good enough like as long as you talk about your passion and like Oman said like don't be like say who you are don't be humble and you will get in if you deserve it um at the end of the day, if you finesse your way in, like you're not going to have a good experience, right? Like you are a round rounded person and you deserve to get into like, you're going to be interacting with people every day. If you, if you like lie about like your interaction skills, like you're not going to have a good time, you know? And schools can really see that because they have seen thousands of people apply. Like if you're worthy to get in, you will get in. So don't be afraid to like write down your passion and what you are. Um, yeah. You're you're making me want to apply again. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting fired up here just just listening to that. Uh, that's great. Um, can you guys maybe just wrapping up here, like talk about just your experience at Western? Like, how was it? I know COVID kind of put a damper on some things, and like, what was it like just generally living in London? Because I know both of you kind of went from you know bigger places to smaller city here uh, there in London, so. What, what was that kind of like? Maybe we can we can stick with you, Lily, and then we'll go go over to Omid. Um, I think Western really shocked me, like of how good of an experience I had. Like I was like, okay, small university town. I don't know, not as culturally diverse. I don't know what's gonna happen, but like, let's give it a shot. But it was the best experience I've had. Like I hands down, so glad that I'm gonna go to UBC. You know. Um, <laughs> It, it was like, I don't, I, Ome and I kind of ha- like are in the same friend group. So like we can like relay that we did something like we really worked hard and played hard and we made friends like family. That's, that's how I say it because you are in a program that are, is so everyone spends so many years trying to get in. And like, even if you're like different cultural background or different race, like something about your personality is like the same. And it's shocking how much people relate to each other. And like physios are just like nerdy, nice, kind people, you know, like, and, and everyone is there to like, be there for you. And I, I, I really don't think Western is like, very, very, competitive or cutthroat like you know some of your like undergrad experience like everyone is there just like just have a good time everyone's like sharing notes um and like western is a school with a very strong school spirit so like there's a lot of like i don't know anthony know like you had the full experience we, we have the like, subpar <laughs> western experience but um it was it was a lot of it's a lot of school culture. It's just a lot of fun. And honestly, guys, like you're already in physio school. It's just, just, just have fun. Like, you know, have fun. Like you're going to pass. No one's going to fail you. Like just have fun. And I think me going to physio school, I really made it a priority to like have a good two years. And I really tried to make that happen. Um, and 
yeah it was just like such a good experience like even though it was like and honestly going to western was like we kind of i think we finessed covid in a way because it was a smaller city the restriction is not as intense as in like toronto or vancouver so we still had like you know <clears throat> the gatherings and whatnot um so that uh, that was like really nice and um i think when you get into physio school you realize your prof are like become kind of like your friends in a way and a colleagues and they kind of just they're like your bros like some of them and <laughs> it's a very different relationship that you have like with your prof in undergrad right so um yeah a, a lot of a lot of fun in 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 my opinion i feel like if you get to western like after covid where everything's like open open and full on it's i even see like the second years now they're like having so much more fun than we did um like school spirit wise like if you want to have a strong student life with a lot of like <clears throat> school community and spirit like western is like definitely the school to go to hands down can't beat it homecoming yeah. seeps all, all that all that is you can't you can't beat it <laughs> what about you omen when you say seeps we haven't even heard of seeps or i haven't even heard of seeps just because of being there during the covid years it's like non-existent uh. But um, yeah, just pretty much what Lily said. It's um, it was a great experience. Obviously, aside from COVID, it was one of those things. I think we uh, we made more of an effort to do things within our program and spend some time with our classmates because we are pretty much one of the few programs that was in person. Everyone else was virtual. They were probably back home studying from their house or their room, and no one was really on campus besides our program. So we made it an effort to still have gatherings but within the, the the covid guidelines or whatever the whatever the rulings were at the time we were trying to keep it at a minimum just to again um just again for that health and safety aspect of it but yeah generally speaking it was it was a great experience because we had more of a bond within our program obviously we didn't have the as much of that school spirit or the uh the events that go on with uh, a typical western year but aside from that it was a great time London in and of itself, it is a, a, again, it's a university town. There are still kind of family, families around and whatnot in different parts. But when you're within that, I guess that Sarnian Wonderland region, it's a lot of that student houses and whatnot. So you, um, yeah, you definitely uh, find friends around there and it's a lot of people, other university students. So you do kind of feel, um, I don't know, it feels very welcoming in a sense. So I, I did appreciate that. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy you guys had a good time because I, I had a great like don't get me wrong I, I loved Queens but like Western and when it's like your undergrad school it's it's just totally different different experience both are great but yeah Western's uh, unbeatable from from you're that, rubbing from salt that in our part. wounds right now man what's that sorry <laughs> you're rubbing salt in our wounds right now I know I know I know it's it's uh I I just gotta say how it is though I just gotta say how That's it is right. but no I'm glad you guys enjoyed it that's great. So, you know, you guys are kind of in a unique position here, um, just off memory here. I don't think we've interviewed anyone who's, you know, just graduated and like, you know, you guys are like a couple months into working. Can you guys maybe talk about that, how that experience has been? Like, I know you guys kind of talked a little bit about it towards the beginning, but maybe you know, talk about the area of practice you're in, where you're working, you know, scheduling, how this, how the start of your career has, has been so far. We can stick with you here, Omen. Yeah, um, I am working in downtown Toronto. I live in Mississauga, so it's not a crazy commute. You take the GO train in, and it takes you maybe 50 minutes or so. Um, but I'm working in a uh, clinic setting. Um, mainly see private insurance type patients. You don't see m many of the MVA. So the demographic I would see mainly would be the, uh, the young professionals downtown Toronto. And um, in terms of the, the experience, it's been great. You, you see a lot of patients, you see a lot of different conditions. And when it comes to scheduling, it's more so meeting the 40 hours minimum. So you have a bit more flexibility when it comes to your scheduling. You can work Saturdays a bit longer. If you find like you have an event on a Saturday, then you can get rid of that schedule, but have a longer Wednesday. So there is that flexibility component there for me at least. And um, yeah, it's, it's been great so far. And um, my role is a bit of a... Um, I'm working as a physiotherapist, but also I have a, a corporate wellness or corporate partnership type role at my clinic. So being in that downtown setting, it's also just trying to network and make these, um, these connections with other corporate companies around there, seeing if 
they would benefit from wellness services provided by physiotherapy. So whether it's ergonomic assessments or group stretches and whatnot, and especially coming out of COVID and a lot of workers getting back into the offices, it's something a lot of these companies put at their forefront. So it's something where you do see a lot of that trend towards the corporate wellness aspect of things when it comes to physiotherapy, at least in the downtown setting. That's sweet, man. That's that you're not just like in that treating role. Like you, exactly. you got a little bit of, of, uh, of a dip role, which kind of, you know, keeps things fresh and, and more like entertaining and novel for you. So mm-hmm. I think that's cool. If anyone can get that, like anybody listening in the future, if you can, you know, kind of create some type of position for you like that, I definitely recommend it. Um, okay. Lily, what about you? You're like down the street from me. Like I got to hear about the this experience. How's it been? <laughs> I know we, we, we got to hang out soon. Um, we do, yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to say if you graduate physio school and you pass your boards, you are going to get a job and there's going to be jobs on the floor. Like literally you, the, in, you are interviewing the clinic and they're not interviewing you. That's the job market right now. So like, guys, don't be afraid of like, you're not going to get a job or whatever. Like you are going to get a job. Um, but for me, I think like, yeah, throughout physio school, we always know like Oma is going to be in that like private corporate world. Like he, he, like that's like he has like a really like really nice job, and I'm so happy that he's having like a great experience. Um, I get like for me, I think the biggest advice to like getting jobs is um, a uh, working uh, is like don't. I think it it tends to happen with like the East Coast people a lot, like burning out like a lot of students just like right out of school don't even take a like take a couple months to travel okay after you're done physical first of all don't like start working double shifts like 12 hour 8 to 12 hour days like six days a week don't do that because you are gonna die like start slow like I started part-time at one clinic first and then I added my other clinic and I made sure I had all my weekends you know I didn't I didn't uh I didn't want to burn burn out basically which happens to a lot of new grads like Omen and I was were like talking about earlier today, like recent years, you know, back in the days, physio working in the clinic, like for many years and then retire, same clinic. But now the new grads are like, go, go, go. It's all like it's so much competition. Like you will get your job. Start slow, like learn slowly, like don't go into it like crazy. Um, but I guess like also don't be scared to go into a specialty if you really like it. Like if you have that calling, like my calling was like in pelvic. So I did all my courses like throughout school, which is totally doable. Um, And then I got to practice like right away. Um, I was really fortunate to get a position at like, I say one of the best pelvic clinics in Vancouver. And like, you know, for me, starting as a new grad, like mentorship was really important. So that's what I look for in a clinic. Um, And it has just been an amazing experience. And like, as (laughs) cliche as it sounds I love my job like so much like I actually enjoy my job and I don't think there's a a, that many professions in the world that can say that other than physiotherapists like so really do what you like and don't be afraid to do it like I was really scared going into like especially feel with like such a complex like patient population um but you know you just got to do it and you know like I never thought I would get a job at this clinic but I just applied and you know they look at people with potential and, you know, I got my position and it's just been so much learning every single day ever since. Um, my other job is like, I totally agree with like, you need to have a strong, like physio end of the day is about the human body, orthopedic, manotherapy in a way, then you add on your specialty. So I knew that I had to have like an orthopedic job. So like that was like, that's my other job at like a friendly neighborhood physiotherapy clinic in Burnaby, um, a very cute, like, um, and, you know, like I get to have somewhere that's like not super intense to practice my orthopedic skills, which is like not my strongest like sort. Um, but I feel like having, um, a clinic where you can practice orthopedics for at least the first couple of years of your career is like important. It doesn't matter like what specialty you go into because at the end of the day, physiotherapy is about orthopedics as like the foundation or like the human body. Um, So yeah, like that's kind of been my experience to so far. I know a lot of people do like split clinics um, and kind of just like pick one in the end. Um, but yeah, like don't don't go into. I think my strongest advice is like don't go into it like too crazy. You know, don't, don't compare your salary or like whatever your split with your other friends. Like you know, 
take your own time. Like you'll get there. You'll get that good salary eventually. Um, you know, and like stay happy and like focus on your mental health and like whatnot. I love it. Uh, first of all, I'm very admirable that as a new grad, you got your weekends, which is like, that's, <laughs> that's incredible. Like I work Saturdays for like two and a half years and I'm finally like off that and it's been blissful, but you know, as a new grad getting, getting that Monday to Friday gig, that's, that's awesome. Um, and the other thing that I think, you know, needs to be highlighted is just, you know, you kind of both mentioned it about just waking up and actually enjoying going to where you got to go. Right. Like that was the biggest thing I think for me when I started my career a few years ago, I was like, wow, I'm like, it doesn't even feel like I'm going into a job. Right. Like I'm, I'm just like happy to be here. This is great. Right. And I just felt like I was just just going through the day without like looking at the time or, you know, thinking about any extraneous variables. Like, I think we've all had jobs where, you know, we dreaded getting up for it. Like, I just think back to the Tim Hortons days, you know, getting up at 7 a.m., like someone yelling at me because I didn't put two creams in their coffee, like working construction. Like, that's that, like, I remember yeah. those days, man. And I know yeah. you guys probably had that. So like getting to that point, like it just, it, it feels great. So I'm glad you both feel like that. Amazing. Anything else guys? That's, that's all the questions I got for you, but was there anything else that you wanted to bring up before, before we wrap this up or you think you're, think you're okay. Um, one last thing I just want to leave with everyone that eventually hopefully gets into a physiotherapy program is Oftentimes you'll find that when they switch, they make that switch from the undergrad to the master's program, they still have that, that study mentality, which is very important. You should have that mentality, still have those same study habits, but at the end of the day, you will learn what you need to learn when it comes to physiotherapy school. And if there's something going on, whether friends are having a get together or there's an event happening, you will probably benefit more from attending those events and getting out of your comfort zone and meeting new friends and, doing adventures on on a certain night than rather than staying in and studying for the extra two hours so it's it's more to say that now that you're in a master's program you're going to be making the you'll learn what you need to learn is just make sure you're actually taking the time to appreciate it because it goes it goes by so quick like after two years it's like it's it's it goes by so quick so just appreciate it while it's there and make sure you make the most of it that is the biggest thing drop the mic just drop it right That's there. It. You drop your money <laughs> in front of you right now, Anthony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lily, are you are you piggybacking off of that, or are you just you're just gonna oh, hit the agree button? Yeah, hit the agree button, and just to emphasize the agree button even more, like guys, don't stay home and study. Like honestly. <laughs> Your whole like that rehab exam, the whole class is gonna <laughs> fail. Like, doesn't matter how hard you stay, you're gonna <laughs> fail that. Okay, like if people go into Western and your second year, you're going to do an exam. It's, you're probably going to fail that exam, but you know, it's been like that for years and it doesn't matter how hard you study, you're going to fail it. So <laughs> no one in the faculty is there to fail you. Like you enjoy your time, like go have fun. Like if you need to pull all nighter to like cram an exam, like do it, but go make friends. Cause these people are going to be your people in your career. And I'm sure Anthony can relate to it. Once it was done, like when physio school was done, it's like done. Like you are not going back to that amazing group of people who have like-minded and like do everything together. Like um, plan trips, like don't like, yeah, don't, don't, you know, study, but like you're smart enough. You got in, you're smart enough. You'll be fine. But like have fun, like really, really have fun. And like make an effort to like know these people who are like, gonna be in your life probably for a long long time right i love it Completely. yeah i i miss it like <clears throat> i think everybody who finishes like the, they just they miss it you know and now like you still see people but you know everyone's kind of scattered across the country now yeah like, look at like lily's back home and in, in bc Omid, you're here in the in the GTA, right? And and you've left the GTA. You've left. You're like a couple, <laughs> I know. a couple minutes probably away from me, and you just bounced. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And you know, like even I'm thinking like my closest friends, like like Reed, for example, like he's in Calgary. Like my other friend Alex, he's on the island, and I know my mm -hmm. other friend Kieran, he's like in 
and Thunder Bay, right? So like none of them except for the island is like close, but you know, we were all once in that program together, just like seeing each other all the time. So those are, those are, those are days that aren't forgotten, but you know, I'm I'm happy I went through it. I'm happy you guys went through it too. That's great guys. Well, just want to say really, really, really appreciate you guys time here on a, on a Sunday night. I know like, Oh it's like what, like eleven forty-five there. Right it's eleven forty-five. Yes, you got to get the bed here, right, Lily? I got to get the bed. Okay. Have work in the morning. Yeah, exactly. But... I feel like it's my bad. I should have realized that. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I, I was like, oh, seven p.m. I was like, nice, and I saw PST. I was like, oh, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I really appreciate your guys' time, and yeah, I think yeah. uh, anybody listening is going to gain a lot from this. So. Really appreciate it. I appreciate it. you for having us. And I feel like this is very full circle because I was watching your videos when I was going through that process of applying. And now that we're hopefully giving back to the people that are currently applying, it feels like life has come full circle now. I've, I've capped it off. I've checked it off. I'm ready to <laughs> retire. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. No, and it is, man. Like people who listen to this, like they, they really take a lot from it. So like your words, yeah. everything you guys said, it, it does matter. And like, you know, we get the DMs about it, so we we see it all the time. So, again, you guys are making an impact. But, anyways, guys, if you like this video, please please consider leaving a five star review, maybe giving us a thumbs up, liking, sharing, Subscribe. subscribing, all of that. Exactly. Turn on the yeah. bell notification. Turn it on. You heard all it first. Turn here. it on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, if you want more uh, episodes like that, do all that stuff and we will see you at the next episode.